Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. One of the finest blueprints of modern technology is the heavy intercontinental range strategic airlift transport that can carry oversized loads. Good signal search today, Ox. Pronounce these bumps, probes are off, clear clocks. These aircraft are designed to carry weaponry, equipment, and personnel over long distances. Among the most notable of all military aircraft of this capabilities is the C-5 Galaxy, which was first introduced in June of 1970. The C-5 Galaxy, a massive plane with the distinction of being the largest cargo plane ever put into service by the U.S. military. The C-5 Galaxy, with its 222 feet wingspan and 281,001 pounds maximum cargo weight, is a stunning sight to behold, both in the air and on the runway. To support such a frame and payload, the C-5 Galaxy uses a retractable landing gear consisting of a grand total of 28 tires and powerful pneumatic shock absorbers. There are four main landing gear units, each fitted with six tandem tires, two in front and four in the rear. The four-wheeled nose gear is equipped with robust, hydraulically driven ball screw units to retract rearward. Each of the rear units rotate 90 degrees when retracted, resulting in the plane's trademark swing movement when deployed. Not only that, the rear landing gear is designed to caster, enabling this mammoth vessel to make smaller turning radius when taxiing. For cargo operation, the hydraulic system of the landing gear is so powerful that it can lower the massive aircraft to make loading and unloading faster. Undoubtedly, C-5's landing gear configuration is impressive. But the record holder for the highest number of tires on a cargo aircraft goes to the Antonov AN-225. First introduced within the Soviet Union in 1988, the 275-foot-long AN-225 was fitted with an astounding 32-wheel landing gear system. 20 of these wheels was fully steerable wheels four in the nose and 16 at the rear. Its cargo door was also fitted with a special ramp for rapid loading and unloading. In 2009, this mammoth plane transported a generator and loading frame weighing 206.7 tons from Frankfurt, Germany to Yerevan, Armenia and holds the world record of mono cargo or single piece load. The 32-wheeled plane was powered by six Ivanchenka three-shaft turbofan engines, and at maximum landing weight, it required 7,000 feet of runway. When not crisscrossing the globe with record-breaking loads, the AN-225 was usually based at the Gostomel Airport in Ukraine, where it was unfortunately destroyed on March 3, 2022. Not only are cargo aircraft designed to carry heavy payloads, but some are expected to deliver it to remote areas without proper runways. 
The C-130 Hercules is also famous for landing with its considerable bulk on makeshift airstrips that are close to the mission field. Its four turboprop engines are built with powerful reverse thrust capabilities to reduce the roll distance during short landings. For remote landing on a makeshift runway, the area is first surveyed and properly marked by the Air Mobility Liaison Officer, or AMLO. The AMLO crew will establish communication with the pilot and guide them along the way. Capable of short landing with its reverse thrust engaged, the C-130 only requires about 3,000 feet of runway to land. Another workhorse of the U.S. Air Force's transport aircraft is the Boeing C-17 Globemaster. Larger than the C-130 Hercules, it is highly recognized for its ability to pull off austere landings in faraway operating bases that have very limited runway available. Contributing to this Boeing C-17's versatile capabilities is its 14-tire landing gear system. which is safely cradled in a wheel well under the main fuselage during flight. Twelve of the 14 tires are situated on the main landing gear and two on the nose. The weight of the aircraft is adequately spread out, minimizing the chance of tipping to one side when making contact with rough surfaces. In fact, despite its size, the C-17 is perfectly capable of operating from runways as short as 3,500 feet. The high wheel count of these large cargo aircraft is not only for supporting weight, but also counts while accomplishing their mission. Since their job is to provide supplies and weapons to the front lines, they are often tasked with having to make austere landings on runways and airstrips that offer less than ideal conditions. Weight and balance of the plane is critical to complete such missions. And this is how the loadmasters ensure a well-balanced aircraft. Normally, ATOC will build a load plan and then they'll give us the load plan. We'll get the center of balance of the cargo, find the weight, put it in the computer, able to get the CG, make sure it's in limits, and then we'll send it to the pilots. Pilots will verify it. So we have roller systems throughout the entire cargo bay and the floor. They're easily able to flip them. So that way, if you have pallets and vehicles, you're able to put the vehicles on first, tie them down, and then flip over the rollers so you can quickly load the pallets. Before even aircraft industry started improving on their landing gears and moving massive loads, trains have been reliably used for the transportation of massive cargo by land. Trains rely on a high wheel count configuration and stay in constant contact with the tracks. Unlike modern roller coasters and monorails, train wheels act as a rolling component, typically pushed onto an axle and mounted directly on a railway car. Centrifugal force results in increment of diameter of right wheel and decrement of left wheel when the track curves and realigns the train's position accordingly. The beauty of this concept can clearly be seen in the world's largest single rail car, the WECX 801 Schnabel car. This massive 231-foot, 400-ton cargo locomotive features a total of 72 wheels and boasts a load capacity of more than 1,000 tons. Single-unit Schnabel cars are designed with high levels of mobility from axle to axle. They also have special arms that extend over the side of each car, as well as jack mechanisms to lift or to lower loads. The equipment to hold the, the piece, it's a, it's, a, it's a very specialized rail car, what they call a Schnabel car. It's a, it's a giant vice grip 
that when you rest the piece down inside of it, uh, it basically collapses around the piece that you're moving. The multiple axles help with the weight distribution to ensure full contact between the rails and the wheels at all times. As we've just seen, whether by land or by air, successfully hauling heavy materials from one place to another still largely relies on that age-old invention, the wheel and associated mechanisms. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. We'll see you next time.